So when it comes to knots, sometimes it's like mind blowing to people. And it's also the absolute best when you tie a knot and you say it's something and then all the knot experts go berserk. That's not the name of the knot. Listen, that's how you tie the knot. Who cares what the name is? Now listen, I'm just joking around with everybody, but it is funny, and, and listen, if you tie enough knots and you're just like, ah, it's functional and you understand how to tie a knot, at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. If you get the name wrong, you get the name wrong. And the reason I'm saying all this is because every time we talk about a jam knot, people say the Canadian jam knot, or the, it's not a Canadian jam knot, it's a jam knot. Somebody made that name up, and well, people make names up all the times. But the point being, I'm gonna show you when we think about jam knots, or Canadian jam knots, or whatever you wanna call the thing, I'm gonna show you a really good jam knot and a trick to it that's gonna make it just that much better for you. Now most of us carry either some type of bank line or paracord. For a jam knot I have found that paracord works way way better, like a million times better, but there's a key to doing it. So I'm gonna use one foot of paracord for this project, but the key to getting a good jam knot with paracord is to take these inner strands and get rid of them and then you have this outer sheathing. Now this outer sheathing does have stretch to it, so that is a, a great factor for us with what we're gonna do with this knot. Also, think of it as like loose material that jams up on itself, so it makes the knot even tighter. Now the thing with this knot is that when you really tie it and it's on there super tight, it's sort of like that's where it's at, okay? If you wanna get that thing free, trying to pick it apart and get the knot apart, isn't it, I, I mean, it can be done. It's just easier just to cut it right off or whatever you put it on. So stuff that's more permanent is when I use this. So we're gonna take the sheathing, and what we're gonna do is at the end of it, we're just gonna put an overhand knot, simple overhand knot. So make your loop and then stick your end into the loop. Now, what's important is when you are making this, you don't need a big, big, end hanging out here. Some applications, yes, but primarily you can pull that pretty close to the end of where you're going to be tying off to. Okay, so we're gonna place it around whatever object we need to tie it onto. And then what I like to do for beginners is to take that end that we already tied that overhand knot on, and you're gonna take another loop, like you're tying another overhand knot, and you're gonna pull it just lightly, okay? So we're not tightening down that overhand knot yet. So you have that in place. What you're gonna do then is you're gonna take the other end of the line and slide it through there, and then you're gonna tighten down the rest of that overhand knot onto that line. Now we can go ahead and we can pull this, and we can work this back and forth. So you can see that that stop knot we initially put in there is tightening down against that line. Now you can legitimately pull this as tight as you want, okay? If I was standing up, I can get way more leverage on this, but we can get that as tight as we want. Now the problem is if I would hit this edge, it's gonna loosen up my whole binding right here. So we don't want that to happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put another overhand knot on the line that we were pulling. So I'm gonna just make a loop just like this, and then I'm gonna put the line through the loop. And then what I can do is I can pull this. Now it's important that we work this overhand knot down all the way like this, totally against where we tightened it, okay? Pull that super, super tight. And now this is super tight, all right, where we were binding. We have a stop knot holding it and another stop knot. That thing is not going anywhere. We can trim this and now we are totally set to go and then I trimmed it up. So very little cordage used in this. Now you might be thinking, well, what, there's, why are you just gonna wrap it around a stick? Well, I'm gonna show you in future videos some projects that you can utilize this with, and there's also other things you can do with lashings if you have very minimal cordage, which we'll get into in future videos also. But understanding that knot, again, another tool for the toolbox, you can utilize that if you get yourself in a situation, you're like, man, I need this thing bound up, I don't have a lot of cordage, or maybe I don't, I don't have enough room to wrap up everything with the big lashing, this might be an option. So it, add it to your toolbox, give it a try, it's really easy, you can run out to your kit right now, get a small piece of a paracord, pull the insides out and do that. But again, that paracord locks itself in place so well, and that stretch works to our advantage in this case, so it's definitely the best when you pull out those inner strands and you use paracord. So hey, I hope you enjoyed this video, another simple, easy trick 
tip to make camp life that much more fun, your outings that much more enjoyable. So this was Dan Wolwak with Coal Cracker Bushcraft. As always, check us out at coalcrackerbushcraft.com and until the next video, stay in the woods.